See that? That is my 2023 Tesla Model Y. Yep, I am a Tesla owner. It's not my only car, but it is the car that I drive to run errands or pretty much do anything where I don't need to go further than a couple hundred miles or take mountain bikes or something like that. I am aware that there is a bit of a stigma that comes with a Tesla, and I should state right off the bat that I am not a Tesla evangelist. My like for not driving an internal combustion engine is higher than my dislike for Elon Musk. Move out of the middle of the road here. I've had to have this car serviced two times within the first 30 days of owning it. In comparison to the other cars that I've owned in my life, I would rate my honeymoon and post honeymoon phase with the Tesla as like a four out of 10. It's not been good. I'm not a happy customer, but I'm not reviewing a Tesla. I'm reviewing the music creation software that comes with the Tesla. Like most people, the first day I got the car, I was browsing around the toy box menu and I just noticed that there was a DAW music making software in it. And I was like, what? And so I opened up YouTube and I saw if any of my fellow pro audio YouTubers had made a tutorial on it and couldn't find anything. There are a few other videos of Tesla owners playing with it, but I personally know at least a half dozen professional musicians who own Teslas. And I've never even heard about this before much less seen a video tutorial or guide or even playthrough. And so that's what we're doing today. I'm in production on a much longer video project, so I decided to just take the afternoon off and drive to a nearby national park and make some music. And I guess let's do that. There's so much electrical interference in this car, it's kind of a nightmare for recording. Let's jam. So initially upon loading, we have a TR-808 kit, and I do wonder if they had to pay Roland to use that name, because I know that there are some plugins and hardware products that don't use the name TR-808. It'll be like 8X8 or something like that. They sort of change it around a little bit to avoid being sued by Roland. I don't want to be a narc or anything like that, but Roland get that money. So that's easy enough. All right, so my first complaint of the DAW is that the hi-hat doesn't have any mute groups, meaning it doesn't close. It just stays open even when the closed hi-hat hits. Let's hear that. Four on the floor beat, it wouldn't really close properly. So if we open this up down here, we have drum pads. And I believe it records. And then the other sounds that just come in here. If we played this electric piano, for example, turn that to a minor. And then we can change kits right down here easily. TR-909. So this is a pretty easy interface if you just wanted to quickly make a beat while you were charging your Tesla or something like that. But there is more to it, and you have to close this and add a track, and now you have all these sounds. And I think the vast majority of them are General MIDI. <laughs> For those of you not old enough to remember, General MIDI is not a military leader who was early into synths. It was kind of just the sounds that came on a lot of different devices in the late 80s and 90s. And it's worth pointing out that they're all pretty terrible unless you're really into Vaporwave, like almost unironically into it. <laughs> this has guitar patterns, and I don't know what that means. So I thought it would add some sort of arpeggiated pattern, but it just essentially gives it another TR-808 kit. <laughs> Oh, nice, we got the MIDI sound effects. Keyboard cat theme. Oh, so it's that. Right. We have beat patterns that we can't preview. So let's hear what lounge chill sounds like. This is a terrible preset, my God. Rock stomp. 
how is this rock stomp? 97 BPM. This will sound like every ACDC beat ever, but on a TR-808. <laughs> and after our beat patterns, we have our percussion instruments, synth drum. We have timpani, but spelled wrong. We want to make some beautiful orchestral music. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a piano here. And we can either record in something, which is probably going to be terrible because I don't think that the metronome stays through the pattern. Honestly, the way this is set up, if you could just bind to scales, you could just mash a bunch of buttons on the touch screen and you would actually have something that sounds halfway decent, which would be great for somebody who's not a musician. Okay, so surprisingly, we actually have a piano roll here, which is interesting. Easy enough. It has unfortunately crashed and I have no idea how to get out of it because I can't get back to the main menu of my car. I'm going to have to Google this. How to reboot a Tesla without the screen. Okay, let's get back into it. Electric piano it is. Add. I'm going to have like the worst backache in the world unless I adjust my seat for music creation. <laughs> Can we change the instrument? Let's go to one of those vaporwave. Ooh, that could work. Oh my god, it literally cleared the whole track. Good thing it... Wait, how do you open something? Do you go to new? Okay, so this will then fortunately just do that. Bass of some sort. <laughs> god. I wish you could combine these kits because the 808 doesn't seem tunable at all. The 909's kick is like... I found out that you could actually change the beat sound to different ones. And so this sounds way better, right? Add it in and... We still have the old one. It just doesn't work. And then even if we add an instrument to this, like this little bass drum here, add in, nothing. It's a tease. Come back. Where, where'd you go? What? Oh, this is so buggy. I could try saving it and rebooting it, but... Oh, no, it didn't actually save what I was doing, did it? Ugh. This is impossible. Whatever, I've been here a long time. Let's just play it and be done with this. I'm never opening this app again. To be fair, all things considered, it's not like there's any competition here. Tesla is, to my knowledge, the only car manufacturer that has put music making software in their car. And the intent of it is just to make you less bored when you are charging your car. So it's hard for me to be objectively critical of that software since it's hard for me to think of anything that needs to exist less than a digital audio workstation in your car. For anyone wondering, I can't use it right now. You obviously can't use it when you're driving. But at the same time, unnecessary novelty and horrendously unfinished software are two things that are plaguing a whole lot of Tesla owners right now in their overall experience with the car. And when I'm mentioning unnecessary novelty, there are a lot of weird, cringy things like romance mode that just plays a fireplace on the screen here and dims the lights of the interior of the car or farts. There's a lot of farts. I could make my horn a fart sound. I could trigger fart sounds from my phone remotely to play out of the car. And these features are kind of weird considering that most people under the age of 13 can't get driver's licenses. But then again, some of those features are common sense novelties, right? I actually get frustrated that 
other cars don't seem to have them. For example, dog mode. I can leave Lucy in here and go run into a store really quick and it'll keep the ambient temperature at 72 degrees. It'll even say on the screen what the ambient temperature is and tell people who are passing by not to worry about it. And I can view her on my phone through the camera on the interior. And of course, at the end of the day, people could forever debate the pros and cons of EV vehicles with lithium mining and all that stuff. But I'm just happy that we are moving on from internal combustion engines and fossil fuels, even if it's not in the most perfect way, it's still something. The vast majority of the things that I bitch about are Tesla problems, not EV problems. And when I switch back to my other vehicle, it immediately feels kind of clunky in comparison in terms of how it's powered. And I feel like this video is just going to be a never ending cycle of me justifying owning a Tesla. So let's wrap it up. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want to join a healthy, large, incredible community with monthly songwriting challenges, loads of audio assets, unreleased music, etc., then my Patreon is for you, and you can join for as little as $1. All right, see you soon.